the new Google Pixel Watch 4 is supposed to have improved sleep stage tracking. It has the same sensor but with a different layout so I have to test how good that actually works. And today I'm actually in Berlin in this hotel room right here because Google invited me to actually go see the Google Pixel Watch 4 in real life and let's find out what all the details are on the new Google Pixel Watch 4. I get to see it, hopefully hold it and I don't know all the details yet so I'll drill Google about those and get all the facts to you. So let's get to it. So I'm headed to the Google offices now, but the one thing that really excites me about the new Pixel Watch 4 is the potential improved sleep stage tracking. So Google used the sleep stage tracking from Fitbit, which has been the same probably since like 2014 or 15 or something, maybe 2016, and it's sort of second tier. So it's already pretty good in terms of sleep stage tracking is good enough for many of you out there, but now Google and Fitbit claim that the sleep stage tracking has been improved. So let's take a look at the devices and hopefully I can find out more. Okay, I'm back in my studio after the event. It was very cool to see the new Pixel Watch 4 and I'll try to summarize all the details I was able to get. I'll unpack both the hardware and the software changes in the Pixel Watch 4, indicate when features expand to previous models, so when you also get them on your older watch so you don't need to update, and include some direct interview statements from Google's director of product for the Pixel Watch software, Ryan Krems. Now to start with, the Pixel Watch 4 is available in two sizes. Similar to the Pixel Watch 3, we have a 40 one and a 45 millimeter version. The screen of the Pixel Watch is also changed where the whole display is now domed underneath the glass. So it's not just the glass that is domed, but the screen itself is domed. This is the new Pixel Watch. This is Pixel Watch 4. So it's our latest product. Great hardware design, domed, first of its kind, dome display both domed glass and a display panel as well. You'll see that curvature right there, 3000 nit display, so 1000 nits above and beyond what we had on Pixel Watch 3. So that basically means that the 41 and 45 millimeter models feature a domed Corning Gorilla Glass 5 display with case housings made from recycled aluminum or aluminum if you're American. The bezels are 15% smaller than the previous generation, resulting in a 10% increase in the active display area. And like Ryan said, the new display has a peak brightness of 3000 nits. The 45 millimeter model has a battery of 455 milliamp hours, whereas the 41 millimeter model is 325. Now this basically means that the always on display power duration is up to 40 hours for the 45 millimeter and up to 30 hours for the 41 millimeter version. Now if you enable battery saver mode, this actually extends to 72 and 48 hours respectively. And charging is now faster than previous generations. So this is our faster charging, 25% faster charging than the Pixel Watch 3. So is the charging on the side for convenience, for making it easier? Okay. Like what is the, the rationale behind it? The rationale, in general, we wanted to make charging simple. Mm -hmm. And it, when you see the charger, it's just a, a quick drop on the charger. It allows you to go, you know, zero to 50 in 15 minutes. Now I actually think that this new charger design, so charging it on the side is pretty nice. The new side mounted quick charge dock is used for charging, but you can also display the time or battery percentage and also alarm info during the charge. So it's a bit more functional. And for me personally, I just hope it's easier to just quickly click it in and out and it still looks a bit cleaner on your desk. Not that my desk is always that clean, but it's still nice. Now both models have the same type of AMOLED display at 320 PPI, variable refresh rates of one to 60 Hertz and an always on mode as I mentioned before. And durability metrics include five atmospheres water resistance, IP68 dust resistance and scratch resistant Gorilla Glass 5. And one nice thing is the Pixel Watch 4 is now also manufactured is for greater serviceability, basically meaning that battery and display components are more easily replaceable, at least in certain regions. I don't know exactly what the details of this are, but I'm generally a fan of things being easier to repair, extending their lifespan and having less e-waste. But let's now talk about an important thing, the sensors. Now sensor hardware includes a multi-path optical heart rate sensor, very similar to the Pixel Watch 3, 
ECG capable multi-purpose electrical sensors, SPO2 or oxygen saturation detector, and like many watches have an accelerometer, gyroscope, altimeter, barometer. There's also a magnometer, it's basically a compass, and a skin temperature sensor, which has been improved. And finally, there's skin conductance or CEDA for stress tracking. Now, as I mentioned before, what I'm super excited about is this sleep tracking. Now, when I'm talking about sleep tracking, I'm talking about sleep stage tracking. So deep sleep, light sleep, and REM sleep, those things you see in the morning when you wear a watch. And this is improved on the software side, introducing a new computational model, which uses a combination of probably motion, heart rate, and other metrics to sort of classify your sleep over the night. Now, we don't exactly know what metrics are used but likely the same ones as were used before since the same model will be introduced on many older watches as well so you don't need to upgrade to get the better sleep stage tracking and it will even be there on old fitbits it is all of those in combined for sure i mean it's the standard especially since it's going back to our previous fitbit devices mm -hmm. it's going exactly, to that's what I was it's thinking. going to leverage the same data inputs but it's a revised model now google actually claims an 18% improved accuracy versus prior models, whatever that means, I couldn't get a clear answer for now. But of course, I'll be putting all that to the test and seeing if the model performs better in my testing. I should hopefully get some early testing models of the Pixel Watch 4, and I'll get that information out to you whenever I can. You know, we announced the uh, improved sleep track, mm -hmm. so 18% better sleep details. So what does that number mean? What does that number mean? Uh, we, we can definitely bring that into the yeah. test pack and some more specifics there. The aspects there, though, is that, you know, as we've mentioned before, we've, you know, have our back end server side sleep calculations. So this new improved algorithm will then do bring it to all devices, all Fitbit yeah. devices and all Pixel Watch devices. Now that improved sleep stage tracking is definitely good news since so far, at least in my testing, the Pixel and Fitbit lineup always performs pretty good, but not the absolute best. In the overview, you can see right here, you can see that in the top right are the best devices. And this basically includes four brands at the moment. Aura, Apple, 8Sleep, and Sleep2, previously called Nukua. And the Pixel watches are sort of in the second tier of devices, so pretty good, together with Fitbit and Whoop devices. It would be great if with the new algorithm they managed to be as good as, for instance, Apple and 8Sleep. Now, if you're interested in my reviews of the Apple and 8Sleep for both sleep tracking and sleep improvement, I'll link them up here. Now, the updated sleep model will be available for all Pixel Watch generations and many Fitbit devices. So you don't need to get a new device to get that improved sleep stage tracking and it should be for free, so no subscription required. When Ryan says in the interview server side calculations, this should mean, as far as I understand it, that the calculations of your sleep stages are not done on the watch itself, but instead things like your heart rate and movement are measured during the night, and then in the morning they're sent to Google servers, the servers then calculate your sleep stages and send these back to your Fitbit app. Now the model's output, such as sleep staging and duration, are expected to change for users. So that reflects algorithmic changes, so changes in the algorithm, rather than that your sleep is different. Now what does this mean? This basically means that on average, after the update, your amount of deep sleep, light sleep, and REM sleep will likely change according to the new model. But this doesn't mean you're actually getting less or more deep sleep than before. It just means that a different and hopefully better model is being used. So you shouldn't compare these new values after after the update to values from let's say yesterday or a few months ago but only moving forward so if you've been tracking your sleep for a long time maybe that's a disappointment initially but you should be getting better data overall and from what i understand the model basically used the same raw input data as before so things like heart rate and movement but it's just been made better in terms of the calculation that's done with this data. But your past data actually won't change. So the moment that the new model is introduced from then onwards, you're getting that new sleep staging, but your old data still remains the same. I believe it's on a go forward only basis. And yes, users may see a change in their sleep duration yeah. as well, but the expectation and our, our understanding is that that is at a more accurate sleep you know, classification. Now, in terms of hardware, a major addition is the dual frequency GPS, so L1 and L5, which wasn't there on previous models. The intention there is to get improved positional accuracy in both urban and wooded environments. And the satellite support in the US is GPS, Galileo, and GLONASS satellite systems, 
Whereas in the rest of the world, you get GPS, Galileo GLONASS, and Baidu QZSS and NIAC. I don't know how you pronounce that last one, but N-A-I-C. In terms of software, the Pixel Watch 4 is the first to ship with Wear OS 6, introducing an updated Material 3 UI, new navigation paradigms like what Google calls edge hugging buttons and improved animation smoothness. This basically should just give you a better experience and a better performance. It's our first product with Wear OS 6. Mm -hmm. So this is going to have our expressive UI, edge hugging buttons. You'll see that throughout the experience. You'll see kind of here on the tiles, I can scroll through and uh, get a view. You'll see kind of like these edge hug hugging buttons. Mm -hmm. So this is throughout the device. Every app, every touch point has this new expressive mm -hmm. UI in conjunction with the Pixel phones as well. Now, I actually didn't get any confirmation yet of which of these UI features in the future will be backported to earlier models. Now, both sizes of the Pixel Watch 4 uses Snapdragon W5 Gen 2 and a dedicated Cortex M55 coprocessor, which basically means that there's a second processor for background workloads and energy savings. So as I understand it, this second processor is a low powered processor for sort of the easy tasks. And then the Snapdragon handles the harder stuff. The, the processor here is the Snapdragon 5100. Mm -hmm. Gen 2, and then we have a coprocessor, new coprocessor that allows us to do more workload with the improved battery life. So yeah. that's actually driving um, our extra battery life there, 30 hours for the small and 40 hours for the large. So there's a local model actually on device, like a, a minor model? A small model that we have there for those smart replies. Yeah, yeah. So that's um, unique to, to Pixel Watch and we believe maybe unique overall as well. Now, as Ryan said, on the device, there will also be an AI, a smaller version for sort of contextual smart replies and Gemini integration, which means it doesn't have to communicate with some server before giving you an answer. And this is only available on the Pixel Watch 4 due to the hardware requirements. Now, the Pixel Watch 4 expands Gemini AI support, including the ability to trigger voice assistance via a race to talk motion. Now, there should also be software rollouts of Gemini on the Pixel Watch 2 and 3, but this race to talk and these sort of contextual smart replies are exclusive to the Watch 4 for hardware reasons. We also launched Gemini most recently on Pixel Watch 2 and 3. With um, Pixel Watch 4, we've also, we're also bringing Raise to Talk. So this allows you to do a, st a standard motion and kick off Gemini just like that. And I can do another one with a, a proper prompt <laughs> to get the full end to end. Can you check my email and see when I depart to Tokyo? And so it's able to then go into my email, capture Based on your details, travel itinerary, and then you're to Tokyo. So, I mean... You get the full exposure, full experience of Gemini on the wrist. Mm -hmm. Very seamless, very easy to use. Now the Pixel Watch 4 also adds some safety and emergency features like the satellite SOS emergency communications when you're off grid, loss of pulse detection, which can potentially trigger emergency contacts if no pulse is detected, safety check, emergency sharing, fall detection, and car crash detection. Now in terms of bands for the devices, so the actual band that attaches it to your wrist, both models use proprietary bands. And there should be expanded size and material options compared to the previous Pixel Watches, with the 41mm bands remaining compatible with the Pixel Watch 1 through 4, and the 45mm bands compatible with the Pixel Watch 3 and 4. Okay, that was a lot of information, but to summarize, a few things will come to the older Pixel and Fitbit devices as well, like the new server side sleep algorithms for all Pixel Watches and most Fitbits, and also the Gemini AI on Pixel Watch 2 and 3, but without local smart replies or race to talk. However, there are some features also exclusive to the Pixel Watch 4. Like I said, that's dual frequency GPS, the new far field skin temperature sensor, on device contextual AI and smart replies and race to talk, serviceable design, so easier replacement of the display and battery, a side mounted quick charge dock, and satellite SOS. Pixel Watch 3 will not have it today. Um, and, you know, we're continuing to look how we can bring back all of yeah. our features across the board. We try to bring them back where, where possible. Yeah. yeah. But I guess there's hardware limitations. At, there for there something. could be, yeah, yeah, there could be hardware limitations. There could be, um, you know, other constraints that we that we need to work mm -hmm. around as well without within the devices. Okay, so overall, I'm actually pretty excited about the new Pixel Watch. 
The heart rate sensor of the Pixel Watch 3 is already one of the best on the market on both the 41 and 45 millimeter versions. And this should mostly be the same for the Pixel Watch 4. They basically use the same sensor components, but they did change the design and layout on the back a bit and also the orientation is shifted a bit. So they did have to recalibrate it and we'll have to see in my testing if the performance is still indeed very good. Talking about heart rate testing, I do a lot of that. I run this channel next to my full-time job as a scientist and it's not cheap. I buy most of the devices myself and I pay my editor Alex. So if you want to support the channel, the most direct way of doing that is by becoming a YouTube member, which gives you early access to some or many of my videos. And it's basically Patreon on YouTube and really a direct way of financially contributing to this channel. Or if you plan to buy anything at all on Amazon, just first click on my affiliate link up here or down here. You can even bookmark it if you want which will give me a small commission and it doesn't cost you any extra. And there's also a bunch of extra affiliate links down here and down here to give you a lot of discounts on particular products. Thanks in advance if you're considering this, but back to the Pixel Watch 4. If Google manages to really improve the sleep stage tracking significantly, that would mean that similar to Apple, they would have top tier heart rate tracking and top tier sleep stage tracking. And then there would finally be an Android equivalent to the Apple Watch's quality. And as a bonus, I do think that the Fitbit app, in my opinion at least, is better in terms of health overview than Apple Health currently provides. Of course, I'll also be reviewing the new Apple Watches, which are rumored to include some cool updates, also in terms of sleep scores, we'll find out. Now, if you wanna see the performance of the new Pixel Watch 4 or the new Apple Watches, and if they're indeed as good as claimed, subscribe now to be notified when those tests come out. In the meantime, check out this video of my original review of the Pixel Watch 3 and this 8 sleep review, one of my favorite sleep improvement products. Thank you